Now in the previous video, we began to develop an intuitive understanding of what acceleration is. And one of the examples we brought up was an object that was accelerating at a rate of 2 meters per second per second, or 2 meters per second squared. In both of the examples that we previously did, we used an initial velocity of 0 meters per second. Now in this video, what I'd like to do is try to develop an intuitive understanding of how the velocity of an object changes if it's either speeding up or slowing down in its initial velocity is something other than zero meters per second. So let's begin with an initial velocity of five meters per second. And we want to assume two things. And you'll see this as we go further along and talk more and more about acceleration. Let's assume we have some coordinate system. And this coordinate system is completely what we call arbitrary. Where I'm going to call this our positive x direction, I'm going to call this our positive y direction. For now, let's assume that my initial velocity is in this direction. And let's further assume that my acceleration is going to be in the same direction as my initial velocity. So that this object begins to speed up or accelerate. That is, the velocity is going to be increasing. So let's look at what the velocity is going to be after one second of accelerating at two meters per second. So if this is my velocity after one second, we know it's at least going five meters per second because the velocity is increasing. And if the velocity is going to increase at a constant rate of two meters per second, the velocity increases by two meters per second. So after one second, the velocity goes from five meters per second to seven meters per second. After one more second of accelerating, if this is my initial velocity, this would be seven meters per second, and the velocity is going to increase at a rate of two meters per second, per second, so the velocity now is going to be 9 meters per second. Notice that over this, notice that over this interval of one second, the velocity has increased by 2 meters per second, per second. And so one of the patterns that you should begin to see is that even if this object begins with some initial velocity other than zero, if it's accelerating at a constant rate, the change in velocity per second will remain the same. So after one more second, the velocity is going to go from 9 meters per second and increase by 2 meters per second after one second. So the new velocity should be 11 meters per second. And again, notice that the difference in these two velocities is going to be 2 meters per second per second, or 2 meters per second squared. And after one more second, the velocity is going to go from 11 meters per second to 13 meters per second. The velocity increases by 2 meters per second per second. And again, the initial velocity does not affect the rate at which this object's velocity increases. The acceleration is going to remain constant. And you can see that where the velocity of this object increases at a constant rate of 2 meters per second every single second. Now let's take a look at another example which we sort of began to touch upon in the last video. And that's what happens if, let's say I'm, I have an initial velocity Let's say we have an initial velocity of 10 meters per second again. Let's draw a coordinate system that represents this object. Let's say that you have an initial velocity. Let's say it's in the positive direction again. So we have some initial velocity. It's in the positive direction. I indicate this with a velocity vector pointing in the plus x direction. And it's going to be 10 meters per second. Now let's say we have an acceleration of negative 2 meters per second. That means the acceleration is in the opposite direction of the initial velocity. Or another way to think of that is that the object's going to be slowing down. So let's say that the acceleration is negative 2 meters per second squared. So I indicate that with an arrow pointing in the opposite direction of the velocity. Also notice another thing. This velocity is, we often think of it as a positive velocity, and this acceleration is negative. So let's take a look at what happens after one second. So after one second of decelerating or slowing down, the object's velocity decreases by 2 meters per second every single second. So the velocity goes from 10 meters per second to 8 meters per second in one second. Now the velocity after one more second is going to go from 8 meters per second, and it's going to slow down at a rate of 2 meters per second per second, which I'm indicating by a negative sign, and it goes to 6 meters per second. Now again, notice that the velocity is going to decrease by 2 meters per second per second, or 2 meters per second squared. Now there's a general way to find the velocity of an object after a fixed period of time, and that's through one of the kinematic equations. So based on the definition of acceleration, which is a change in velocity per change in time, which we'll write as delta t, oftentimes we want to know what the velocity is after a fixed interval of time. And one of the ways to find this general relationship is to first multiply this equation 
or definition by the change in time. Now, what you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to another side. So this delta t on this on the right hand side cancels out. And then you can rewrite this now as acceleration times the change in time equals the change in the velocity, v final minus v initial. Now if we want to know the final velocity, not the difference in velocity after a certain period of time, what you'll do is you'll add the initial velocity to both sides. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to another side. And when you do this, what you should get is that the initial velocity plus the acceleration times the change in time equals the final velocity. And believe it or not, this is the formula or relationship that we've been using the entire time, except we've been doing it from an intuitive approach. So as an example, in this last problem, we said our initial velocity was a plus 10 meters per second. We said that our acceleration was negative 2 meters per second squared, that is 2 meters per second per second. And let's suppose we wanted to know what the final velocity was after, say, 3 seconds, which we did in the previous problem. Now, from this approach, where we we'll use v final equals v initial, whatever the initial velocity is, plus the acceleration times the change in time, we can now find the final velocity without going step by step by step. So in this case, what we would do is we would say that our, our initial velocity is 10 meters per second. And to that, we're going to add the acceleration, which notice it's negative 2 meters per second squared times a time interval of 3 seconds. Now, one of the things that you should notice right away is that this squared term cancels out with this unit of seconds. So you get a unit of meter per second. And to continue with this, you get 10 meters per second minus negative 2 times 3, which is minus 6 meters per second, 10 minus 6 meters per second is 4 meters per second. So after 3 seconds of slowing down, this object will be traveling at 4 meters per second. And if you notice this 4 meters per second is what we would arrive at if we continued with this logic before. So after 6 seconds, 6 meters per second minus 2 meters per second equals 4 meters per second. And so after 3 seconds of slowing down, again you get 4 meters per second.